Welcome HSM community, especially our 2020 graduates and their families, if you are watching this as, as well. Welcome to Senior Sunday 2020. Every year at the end of the school year, we gather to honor, to celebrate with, and also just to speak to our seniors, uh, our graduating seniors and their families. This is certainly a little bit of a different Senior Sunday than we ever would have anticipated, but I'm thankful just for the opportunity, even in this electronic medium, to honor, celebrate with, and speak to our seniors, our graduates, and their families. What we're gonna be doing today is that we're gonna hear from a few of our graduating seniors, as well as hear from a few of our leaders that are adult leaders that lead with our seniors and just share a little bit of encouragement for our graduating seniors, their families, or really all of us as we talk about the crazy unknown that is the future. I'm thankful that we as a ministry get to do this and celebrate with you. And so we're gonna begin by hearing from a few of our seniors in HSM. Hi, my name is Emily. Um, I'm a senior and I just wanted to share one of the biggest things that God has been teaching me and growing me in during my time in the high school ministry, and that has been to trust Him. Um, throughout my life, there's been different points where God has either put something in my life or even taken something away from me um, that has just left me questioning why exactly He was allowing for this to happen, why I was feeling the way I did. Um, what exactly was the purpose for this happening? And one of the things that the Bible teaches us that is really important to remember is that God has a plan. We may not see it, um, but we need to trust it and trust that he knows what is going on, that he cares for us and what is going to happen is for our good and is for his glory. Um, one of my favorite passages is Luke 5, specifically verses 1 through 11. Um, and in, within this passage, Jesus is going, or he goes into this boat with Peter um, and there, and Jesus is teaching this crowd from this boat. And after he's done teaching, he turns to Peter and says, like, let down your nets um, into the water so you can catch some more fish, or so you can catch some fish. And one of the things that has happened that day is that they haven't been able to catch fish. They've... They've tried multiple times and every single time they've come up empty. Um, and because of this, Peter kind of hesitates and he's like, well, Jesus, like, we haven't caught anything. Why would it be different now? Um, and he specifically says in verse five, and Peter answered, master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. In verse six, it says, and when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled the, the boats so that they began to sink. One of the reasons why this is one of my favorite passages is because God is, or sorry, Jesus for one is asking Peter to trust him. He knows that they haven't been catching anything. He knows that it might seem a little like unclear as to why um, he's asking this, but he's asking Peter to do it. And Peter, and, and my second reason why I love this so much is because of Peter's attitude. He's like, Lord, I, I understand that you're asking me this. Um, I don't know why you are. I don't see how this is going to work out, but I'm going to do it anyways because you're asking me to. I'm going to trust you. And I feel like we should have an attitude like Peter when it comes to different things that God has put in our life. When we don't understand something, we should look at it and say, you know what, Lord, I don't, I don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand why I'm feeling this way, but you have a plan I may not be able to see what exactly is going to come out from this, but I need to trust you because overall he sees the bigger picture. He sees the fish that are right under our noses that we don't. Um, and because of that, we need to trust him and know that things are going to end up for our good and for his glory. Hello, church. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever, whatever it is for you uh, right now. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, so as I as I sat there after uh, John asked me to do this, um, I was a little perplexed as to what I would actually talk about. Um, 
I, I knew that I wanted to in some way um, reflect on the lessons that I had learned uh, throughout high school. Um, and I wanted to um, do something that, uh, or talk about something that our seniors um, all the way down to our freshmen could identify with. Um, so as I was just thinking back about all the experiences I had in high school, I finally came on to the notion, the idea of freedom. Um, so uh, once I got to that, I kind of started thinking about um, how in, in high school and especially moving on into college, I have a lot of freedom and I've had a lot of freedom and opportunity to make uh, choices on my own um, and do things on my own. Um, and I didn't always I didn't always make the right decisions on my own. Um, and uh, sometimes I didn't, I wasn't very responsible with my time. Um, that's not to say I always misbehaved or I was always um, off task or uh, not focused on what I needed to do. But um, there was definitely times where I could have exercised a little more, a little more wisdom um, in the choices I made within the freedom I had. Um, so that's what I wanna talk about. Um, you are all uh, learning who you are and growing as Christ followers, um, whether you're getting ready to go to college or you have three years left of high school um, or you're somewhere in between, this can apply to you. Um, you are in the most pivotal and important years of your, your, uh, your life right now. A lot of what you do now will affect you later. Um, so... That's, that's really what I want to talk about. So first, I will turn to 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Um, and it says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. You can, you can do pretty much anything you want. There's a lot of freedom in high school. You go to school every day, um, and you can choose to not pay attention in class. You can choose to hang out with the wrong people. Um, and that's all up to you. To you, your your mom and dad aren't there with you, um, and your teacher can try and get you to focus, but ultimately it's up to you. Um, you can you can choose to go to that party, you can choose to hang out with those people, but are all those things helpful? Um, and the the answer really is no. Um, you you they, they aren't helpful, and you can choose to do better things with your time and better things with your freedom. And then if we turn in Galatians 5.13, we also see that it says, um, For you are called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Um, and this is talking about the freedom that God gives us. Um, all the freedom that we experience in life is God-given. Um, and we have to respect that. We have to respect that um, He gave it to us willingly um, and it's ultimately up to us what we do with it, and we can choose to um, we can choose to do uh, what God wants us to with it, or we can choose to uh, squander it. We can choose to waste it, um, and ultimately um, dishonor God through that. Um, it also says in Romans six fourteen, for sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. The New Living Translation even goes to say. Um, you are not under law, but under the freedom of God's grace. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, God sent his son uh, to die for us um, and set us free, free from the sin of this world. And we don't have to follow that path. We don't have to uh, choose um, the things of this world. We can choose um, to, go to do good things with our freedom. Um, and um, that's what I hope uh, this message will kind of inspire you to do uh, do good good things with your freedom um, when you're when you're at home um, especially during this time you can choose to um, waste away the days not doing homework just sitting at home um, scrolling through social media or um, playing video games or something like that um, because ultimately you have the freedom to do that but uh, is it wise to do that would God want you to do that um, and is it helpful and the answer is the answer is no. Um, so um, as a final note, um, you, are, you are in, like I said, the most important years of your life. So be wise with your freedom. Um, to my seniors, um, as you head off to college, you, you have even more freedom. You, uh, your parents are miles away. Um, they won't be right there to check in on you. Um, 
So be wise. Um, congratulations for making it this far, seniors. I know it doesn't feel like it uh, during these times, but you, you definitely, you definitely did make it, um, and it is rewarding. Um, and I, I want to congratulate you on making it this far. So thank you for listening to me, giving giving me the opportunity. Um, God bless you. Hi everyone, I'm Alex, and this is something that God has really made super clear to me. My over my past few years of high school and really has put this on my heart throughout all of those years. And I wanted to be able to share it with you guys and hopefully encourage you with this as well and that it will just sit on your heart the same way that it has sat on mine. The verses I will be reading are Luke 15 verses 3 through 7. Okay. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after his lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in that same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Uh, this verse, God has really shown me that he deeply cares for all of his children. Every single one of us individually, God cares for greatly. There is no limit to God's love for us. And he shows in this verse that he is willing to specifically go after each and one of us, each and every one of us, to find his lost sheep. And we are never too far gone. We're never lost. We may at times feel, especially in high school throughout different seasons in our life and problems that may be going on, whether through school, family, relationships, and etc., it's very easy to find that God is not near when God is always looking and seeking us out and waiting to find his lost sheep. God will leave all the rest to find his one lost sheep. And an important thing that I really just love the way that it's phrased in this verse is that he rejoices when he finds that lost sheep. God rejoices when we come back to him and welcomes with open arms and he will always rejoice and be a kind and gracious God. And that is what this verse has taught me and really stuck with me and deeply shown me throughout all my years of high school. No matter how far you think you are, God is always right there. And he is always seeking us out and looking for his lost sheep. God is our great shepherd. Thank you. Hey, everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Luke Yaguchi, and I'm one of the graduating seniors this year. And I just wanted to share a little bit with you all of what God has taught me over my years in high school. Um, the biggest thing that God has taught me uh, these last four years is the importance of his word. This process started um, after I was accepted onto the Ecuador team. When we began meeting to prepare, prepare for Ecuador, and uh, we had to read the Bible uh, every day and discuss it with the other members of our small group um, within within the um, the bigger team. Um, I had never read my Bible regularly or consistently every day. Um, aside from Sunday mornings and uh, reading through the Gospel of John and most of the New Testament for the first time every day began to spark a desire to know more about God and the Bible and uh, other doctrines. After the trip, I began to feel 
uh, led to go into ministry as a pastor. After a couple more weeks of considering it, I uh, approached our former pastoral resident, Austin Rogers, um, and we began, began meeting um, once a week, and he had me read the Bible and pray every day and memorize scripture and other disciplines um, throughout the week. And um, that began a big change in my faith by simply taking the by taking my faith seriously and reading his word um, and making it a priority in my day and in my life every day. Um, I would, um, I still do read my Bible and um, take notes on what I'm reading. And um, I really, uh, and really spending time with him in prayer beforehand and after. And um, I really took to heart um, the verses in Second Timothy um, uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, which says, uh, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Um, what that verse says is really that every single part of the, of the Word of God is true and valuable and necessary in my life. It's not all applicable in my life, um, but it all is necessary. And, um, And it teaches me about who I am and who that and oh, and who he is and who I am because of who he is. And uh, it tells me um, how and when I've fallen into sin and how I can get out of it. And um, that's the the biggest thing that God has taught me um, in my high school years is um, the importance and value of reading God's word especially every day and making that a priority in my life and in my day. Thank you. I just wanted to share that with you all. And uh, uh, thank you very much for letting me share. Hey, seniors, I'm Chad. I'm the Young Adults Pastor here at Canyon Hills, and I'm sure I'm gonna be one of many today to say congratulations. Uh, you guys finally made it. You are transitioning from high school student uh, to college student, and I'm so uh, excited for you. Uh, one thing that I've noticed in my life, and, and also a lot of uh, those around me as well, is just the importance of having community um, in a time of transition. And so one of the ways our Young Adults Ministry is trying to help you with that is to get you connected into a life group. Um, and so one way you could do that right now, if you pull up your phone and go to our website, uh, you can click on the Young Adults page, and there you can walk through different steps of finding all the different life groups that we had, and we would love to help get you connected. Another way that you can get connected into our young adults ministry is to join our weekly virtual gatherings. Uh, these happen at eight o'clock on Thursday nights uh, and all our young adults come together for a time of worship. Uh, we spend some time praying and diving into God's word. Uh, it would be a great way for you just to get a little taste and a feel uh, as to what our young adults ministry looks like. And then lastly, uh, let me just encourage you uh, to find us on social medias. Uh, it is Canyon Hills young adults um, and, and just like or, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and that way you can have some announcements uh, of what's coming up of different ways that you can now get connected into our young adults ministry. I'm so excited to get to know you. I'm so excited to hear your story uh, and to help you take your next step uh, in your faith. Uh, and so if you need anything at all, feel free to reach out to me and I'm sure we'll be talking here soon. Have a great day and congratulations. Hey seniors, where has the time gone? Congratulations seniors. You have reached a big milestone in your life. Hey guys, congratulations. Congratulations class of 2020, you did it. 
I cannot believe this year has gone by so quickly. Four years came, you were in and now you're out on your way to the adult world. We are so proud of you and looking forward to hearing all the wonderful things that you're going to do. I am so proud of you all. You all have grown so much in these last few years in your walk with God, in the way that you love each other, um, and just the way that you love others. I have seen many of you make decisions, some really hard decisions in your lives because you believed it was the right and godly thing to do. Uh, you guys are supportive of each other. Um, you uh, push each other to be better. You pray for one another. Um, and that's awesome. Uh, that's really awesome. Um, and uh, you guys are also caring and kind. You've built a community where it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to um, talk about deep, dark secrets and um, and you guys don't shame each other for it. You don't make fun of each other um, and really cool. You guys uh, have interests and personalities that are all over the board. Um, and yet the great thing about this group is that you guys really care for one another. I'm praying for each of you as you move from high school. I'm praying that first and foremost, you pursue God and love him with all your heart. I'm praying for God's leading in your lives and that you seek him for direction. I hope that you just keep looking for God in the years to come. Um, in the next 10 years, you're probably gonna grow even more than you grew in the last 10 years. God is the fountain of living waters and is the source of all you need. Don't allow the blessings he's given you to take the place of God in your heart. Ultimately, those blessings themselves, whether friends, relationships, school, or whatever, can't give you what you need. Remember who they came from. Because the really beautiful thing or great thing is that as you study the world and what is true and how the world actually is, it's gonna keep leading you right back to God and who he's revealed himself in the Bible. Uh, you may find yourself with more freedom and more choices than you've ever had before. My encouragement to you is to enjoy the free freedom you have and keep filling your mind with God's word so that the overflow of your heart will be a light and reflection of Christ's love to others. Don't forget who you are. You are in him, made for a purpose. Just know that you guys mean so much to me and I am just so thankful to have been your leader and I can't wait to see what you guys do next. Uh, happy graduation and I love you guys. I'll be praying for you. Uh, and as always, this goes um, no matter what, uh, we are here for you. You are loved and you will not be forgotten. Whenever we come to a transition time like this in our lives, uh, we just naturally begin to think both about the past you know, what we're, what we're leaving behind, the things that we're not gonna be doing anymore. And this is especially true as anybody graduates high school or moves on from one thing to the other. But we also begin to think about the crazy unknown that is the future and, and what it holds. And this is an obvious statement, but the future is a mystery to us. In our limited humanity, we do not have the ability to look into the future and know uh, what it holds. If you do have that ability, give me a call because I have a business opportunity for you. But we, we just don't know. Uh, and as much as there is unknown, I do believe, there, believe that there are a few things that we can be certain of in our future. And this isn't all that we know as we look to the future, but I think there are three things that I'd like to point out that we can be certain of. The first thing is that no matter what your future holds, you can be certain that you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna mess up. Uh, I know that that may not sound super encouraging. Welcome to Senior Sunday 2020. Let's look to the future, we're excited for you, and you're gonna mess it up, but you are. We all know that. Anyone that's graduated high school knows that we have grand plans and hopes, and yet our humanity kicks in and we sin and we make mistakes. But Exodus 34, six tells us, it says that the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger, abounding in loving devotion and faithfulness. And that's who God is. In his consistency, it's who he's always been, it's who he is right now, and it's who he will always be. What this means is that God is faithfully forgiving and faithfully devoted to us. He does not change with time, and he does not change with our actions. So no matter what your future holds, may you live a future where you consistently 
and constantly acknowledge the fact that you need God's forgiveness. And may God be the place that you go first and foremost in prayer when you mess up and when you sin. The second thing that we can be certain of in your future is, man, we, we don't know everything that your future holds, but we can be certain that parts of it are going to be hard. Yep, parts of your future are gonna be hard. There's gonna be moments that feel overwhelming. There's gonna be moments that are harder than you ever expected. But we know from Psalm 46, it says this, verses one and two, it says that God is our refuge and strength. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. This means that God is actively present with us and that God is consistently working for us and in us. That in a mysterious way, God gives us strength that we don't naturally have in ourselves, that is not innate, that gives us the ability that we don't naturally have without him to face circumstances that are bigger than we ever expected. So no matter whatever the details of your future are, may you live a future where again, you consistently and daily admit your need for God. One of the practical ways that we live that out is by being in his word each and every day. That in going there, we find the words of God to give us strength, to remind us of who we are, who he is, and what is true. So may you live a future where daily you admit your need for God. And finally, we don't know what your future holds, but you can be pretty certain that there are gonna be moments that are filled with joy, that there's gonna be joy in your future. And I don't just mean moments of like happiness where great things happen, happiness is great, but, but joy is deep and abiding, joy that is rooted in who God is, what he's done for us, and the good gifts that he has given us. James 1, verse 17, it says, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. That means that we have a God who delights in giving good gifts to his children. And when we enjoy those gifts and when we celebrate those good things that he gives us, it's actually an act of worship. It is worshipful to thank God in celebration of the good things that he has given us. And so we as a high school ministry, and I, I mean, I celebrate with you. I celebrate the fact that you are graduating high school because that is a good gift that has been given to you by God. And so we worship God by celebrating with you. So we don't know everything that the future holds, but whatever your future may be, may you live a future where you consistently acknowledge and thank God as the giver of good gifts, that it is he who gives you all good things, and that may that grow your faith and your trust in the goodness of God that you may grow in faith and trust that he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing in your life, in the world, and therefore he is worthy of our trust and our obedience. If you are here and you are watching this and you have made the decision to trust in Jesus' death and resurrection, you're graduating senior, really anybody, you have the amazing gift, you can have the amazing confidence that the one good gift above all else that God has given you is the gift of salvation. That every morning you wake up, you can be confident that you are forgiven. Every morning you wake up in the future, you can be confident that you are God's child. That every morning you can wake up, you can be confident that his righteousness is credited in your place and that whatever the future holds, that you can be certain that you will spend that future with him. Yep, we don't know the future but we can be pretty certain that there's gonna be parts where you're gonna mess up and you're gonna sin. There's gonna be parts that are hard and there's gonna be parts that are joyful. But whatever the future holds, God's character will be consistent in your future in the way that it has always been, in the way that it is now, and it will be so in the future. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray specifically for our graduating seniors and families and then just share a little bit of announcement with you. So let's pray. Father, we, we thank you that you are the God who gives good gifts. We thank you for these graduating seniors and their families within our ministry. Uh, Lord, help us to celebrate them well in a crazy season uh, that they never anticipated. 
Uh, but I pray, God, that you would remind each and every one of them uh, in their heart of hearts of the consistency of your character. May you drive them back to you in prayer and back to you in your word, that no matter where they go, no matter where they live, that those are always and consistently available to them. May you remind them that those are available to them, and in doing so, may they grow in faith and trust in your character in their life that they may know your forgiveness when they mess up, that they may know your strength when things get hard, and they may know your goodness and celebrate the good things that you have given to us. Father, we ask that you bless them, bless their families, and may you give them a time of celebration amidst a crazy time. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So to all of our, our families uh, of our graduating seniors, we also want to say well done to you. To all the parents, congratulations. You have done it as well. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity as parents over our seniors just to have any role in, in partnering with you, in caring for, in leading, in, in helping grow our, our seniors. It is an honor that you have bestowed upon us and an honor that we do not take lightly. To our graduating seniors, congratulations. We love you, we miss you, we celebrate with you. We hope that whatever the very first day that HSM Sunday can come back and we can all meet, we hope you're there. Normally after Senior Sunday, we boot you out. We're like, okay, it's time to go. You're a senior, time to grow up. We're not doing it this year because this year's crazy. So whatever the first day back is, man, I hope to see you there so that we can celebrate with you in person. To all of our students, we love you and miss you. We can't wait for that day where we get to gather with you. We can't wait for the day where we get to do this with you in person as you graduate from high school. And we can't wait for the day that we can gather in person all together. In the meantime, we're praying for you. We're gonna keep doing everything that we can to communicate electronically and excited for the day that we can gather. Thank you again for tuning in and joining us for Virtual Senior Sunday 2020. And we'll talk to you soon.